This is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by former British and Commonwealth welterweight champion Bradley Skeet. Brad, how are you? All good, mate. How's the uh, good. last time we spoke? You just embarked on your training journey, got your Board of Control licence. How's all that going? Yeah, really good, mate. Can't complain. Um, took on a young a young amateur, well, he's pro now, Robert Vincent. Um, he was successful in his debut. He boxed really well. Um, done some really good stuff and, uh, yeah, enjoyed that got 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 the first win as the trainer and uh yeah um it started training uh michael hennessy jr okay. uh he, he's with me now um yeah so it's, jim's buzzing going really well mate can't complain how do you find the training side especially now you've had a fighter in a actual pro fight how do you find that compared to being in there yourself yeah it was still like uh, obviously I was so used to the, the, the fighting side of things, getting that knock on the door as the fighter to, to get out ready. But now it's still got that little bit of nerves and that for, yeah. for obviously my fighter getting that knock on the door saying it's time to go sort of thing. But yeah, it was good. Um, I, re I really enjoyed it. I, I, I enjoyed being part of it and uh, doing doing the training side of things now. And uh, it's a, it's another journey for me, another chapter of my career, another journey for me to 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 now do with my, my fighters. So, yeah, I'm, I'm buzzing to be be part of their, their journey too with Rob and Michaels. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure I'll get a few more under my belt and, uh, yeah, have a good career being a trainer. Great stuff. How did you um, get involved with Michael Hennessy Jr.? Um, it, it was, like, it was, it was, it just fell on me, really, because he come to the gym and he was sparring with Alex Bellingham. He was preparing for a fight. And Michael had had the fight, his last fight. He had, he, had, he knew obviously was preparing for that fight, and he he come sparring, and then uh, he done the spar, and then his his dad Mick was there, and then they come a few times, and then after a few few of the sessions, um, he got I got a message to ask if he could come and do because I still do one on ones, and I'm like do personal training as well. He asked to do if he could do a session with me. And then he come and done a session, and um, yeah, we got on really well. I knew him anyway from before, but we got on really well, and uh, he um, he really liked the session. We done a few more, and I think he had like three weeks to go before his fight. And then I just basically I said like, oh, like who, who's training? Who's doing your fight? He said, oh, to be honest, I've got not I've got not no one at the minute, not got no one at the minute. Um, so I was just I said, oh, like listen, I have got my license. I'll uh, I can give you a hand if you want. And then he, he was like, oh, thanks, appreciate it. He's a real, like, a real nice boy. So he was like, really appreciate it. And then I spoke to his dad, spoke to Mick. And then, yeah, Dan ended up doing doing his corner. And, yeah, been been with him ever since. And, yeah, it's just Fran as well, his sister. She uh, helped her out for a, a championship she's just gone. She won. She's a, she's a real good fighter, a really good talent, Fran. And, yeah, just, yeah, got a real good relationship with Mick now and, and obviously Fran and Michael and yeah, they're, they're, that future that in that family is going to be good. I, I believe they're, they're good fighters to pair them. Good stuff. Now I want to talk to you a bit about the year of boxing we've had because now you're outside the ring. You can be, I'm not saying you weren't objective before, but you certainly can be now. Um, tell us some of the fights, particularly in the UK that have stood out to you over the past 12 months. Uh, there's been some good, good ones really like, uh, what's up the top of my head you're going to get put me on the spot now who have we had at the top of my head um, obviously like the, the big one the Furies and obviously people obviously like complaining about obviously the opponent of obviously Chisora and that that's the, the recent most recent one I've, I've, I've seen but like what like he's he's the main man and he he's he's got a right to pick and choose who he's fighting but everyone wants to see him in in the big fights obviously the likes of AJ and Usyk and that but I think to to that magnitude of fight the the, the crowd he drew drew out just fight so obviously have that third fight with is was good I like Fury I've always liked Fury I think and can fight um at top top of my head you got me now I can't even think of what other fights there have been. Well, I mean, but, Bivol and Canelo, a lot of yeah, people were yeah, tagging yeah. Bivol as their fighter of the year. Yeah. What yeah. do you make of that? Do you think he's done enough? Mm, Bivol's a great fighter, ain't he? And obviously the, the likes of the, the likes of Canelo is is they're, they're they're like the elite level of, of the, the boxing world, ain't they? There's world class and there's elite. They're at the the top top and top, they're the elite. But that I think that needs to happen more. Like, do you know what a fight I was gutted didn't happen, or hopefully it happens, is the Errol Spence and Crawford fight. 
Mm. I think I think them they the the elite level fight should be fighting the elite now, man. They just all this like not not even duck and dive and fighting other people, but they need to fight each other. So that that that's one fight this year. I was glad it didn't happen. I thought that was gonna happen the Errol Spence and Crawford fight. Well, another one that fell through was obviously Conor Ben and Chris Eubank oh, Jr. Yeah, yeah. Which, yeah, um, really yeah I think it. fell through on fight week as well. Yeah. What, what did you make of that whole kind of situation? Yeah, it's a sticky one, isn't it, really? There's a... Looking in, it is where it is, isn't it? Like, he's, he's, he's got... He's got uh, done for a banned substance and you can't... In boxing, you can't do that. Your life's on the line, do you know what I mean? So, he's, he's saying he's innocent, but... You, you've been banned. You've had two tests, so there's what 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 can you do? This is it's out there. Do you know what I mean? So and he put a statement, and and he's pleading he's innocent. So until until that comes to light, what you only can believe what's been said. Do you know what I mean? And what's what's in front of you? He's been all the public know that he's fouled two tests, so that's the fight didn't go ahead because of that. So that's how that's how you got to take it. It's gotten really because it's. It's, it's, it's a massive fight and a big opportunity missed for both of them, really. So we, we'll see what happens with that one. In your career as a boxer, how diligent were you in, you know, looking at your nutrition, ingredients and everything, all that sort of stuff? And how much of that did you leave to your training team? It took, just, it's, you're in there, like, you, you, you couldn't leave it to anyone else but yourself, really. You're the one who's in there, you're the one fighting, it's your career at the end of the day. If you get done for drugs, your trainer ain't going to get, like, do you know what I mean, get, get banned, it's, it's yourself. So at the end of the day, you're your own man and you've got to be so careful. At that elite level and that top level, do you know what I mean, the world-class level, you got to be so spot on and you got to know what's going in and what's going out, do you know what I mean? And you got to have the right people around you, you got to have, you got everyone in your team that like, know, knows what's what and, you can't cut corners and can't think you can do easy route and oh if I take that or if I do that that can help that and take that and that gets rid of that do you know what I mean it's all it's not on it's not on and I would never never I had a good career do you know what I mean and never once I've had many many drug tests never found not one always happy to take whatever test needed and never I'm like proud to say never found one and never took not one banned substance in my life, in my career, for boxing never would. So there's no there's no easy way to the top. So these fighters would want to take bad substances and think they've got that edge over other fighters. And that's it's one, it's it's a dangerous sport anyway. Lives get lost and two, that's cheating. If that that's just cheating. Agree with you. Um Anthony Joshua hasn't had a great year either, although for very different reasons. Lost again to Usyk, just as he did in twenty twenty one. But now he seems to be on a bit of a, a tour of the US, trying out different trainers, as he did previously before he brought Robert Garcia back last time. What do you make of that, not just with AJ, but as an approach, like going around different gyms, picking up different bits, rather than sticking with one person? Yeah, um, he was doing well um, with Rob and he got to where he got. But um, sometimes like, sometimes a change is needed. Like, and there's nothing wrong with, with a change. but um, but I look at myself, I was with Al, Al Smith at iBox for like all my career. Then I had a break and then I needed a change. I wanted to change and then and moved on to, to, to Sheffield and I've had the Ingle gym with Dom Ingle. So I can see like having a change and, and changing things around is, is, is a good thing because it benefited me. Um, so him, him going around, but trying all these different trainers and, and here and there, not really know if you're coming or going and what's, what's going on. Is, is not good really. You need to be in the gym, decide who who you're who you've gelled with and what works and, and get to work and, and put them wrongs right, try and put them wrongs right. But going around I, I wasn't that that was never for me. Personally that wasn't for me. I, I'd been with my whole career in boxing. I was at Elsword, my one amateur club my whole career with Elsword and Sid Khan. Turn pro was with Al Smith all the way then my last couple of fights I, I had a change went to Sheffield and went with Domingo I just was with the same people do you know what I mean so but all this changing and if if if, if I, I don't really think it's a good thing and before I let you go just give us an idea of what Christmas looks like for you 
Christmas, a lot of food, a lot of drink. <laughs> You're still no, looking really good shape. I try to, mate. I try to. No, nah, just, yeah, it's, uh, like, like, can I have, have a good Christmas in Germany so I'm not having to worry about myself fighting and making weight and watching what I eat now. So, yeah, I can be on the phone to the, the fighters now and get getting on to them, make sure they're, they're getting in the gym or straight after Christmas. But, yeah, nice, and it's been a good year. And, uh, yeah, like I say, I'm enjoying what I'm doing now, this side, side of the ring and uh, enjoying enjoying being a trainer and, and the new new journey for me now. And whereabouts is the gym? Uh, in Alpenton, Ford's Gym in Alpenton. Yeah. All right, well, people out there know where to come if they want to get trained by a former world number one. <laughs> Top man, Dad. Cheers, mate. You have a great Christmas and New Year. And you, mate. Take care, Let's mate. Catch up in the New Year. All the best, mate. Thanks, Dad. Have a good one. Yeah, bye mate. Bye, bye.